Welcome to TKO on Joe, together with 32 Red. Um, about 20 hours ago, we left London for Philadelphia. Um, while we were in the air, there was an accident. Obviously, we're prepping for a big fight week for Carl's fight on Saturday night. We landed to the news that there'd been an accident in the hotel lobby. He's broken his hand and he's absolutely unable to compete on Saturday. It's devastating news. Um, there was lots of stuff flying around on Twitter before any official statements were released. Um, we hadn't heard much from Carl when we got here and I wanted to leave him to it. He just called to say, do you want to come down to the hotel and have a chat with me before I fly back tomorrow? So we're here at the Renaissance Hotel. Um, let's go and speak to Carl and find out exactly what happened. Joe presents TKO, together with 32 Red. Oh, hello, boys. Fucking hell, mate. Sorry. Oh, mate, I'm so, yeah, so man. sorry, mate. Oh, man, don't so worry about it. Fucking grim. Jesus Christ. Fucking size of that thing. I'm to come thing. through here, just through the fucking curtain. Knock that over. I feel how heavy it is. Heavy as fuck. Oh, but this fell from fuck. here. No, that's got to be like 60 kilos. The car was 50 sitting here. kilos. So what, you're, where, where are you I was there, sitting yeah? in this seat here. Don't fucking sit there again. So I'm sitting here. I'm standing here. Phone. Yeah. Someone knocked this. Try to come through the curtain. Banged in the ad. There was a different table here, obviously. I was yeah. Just it's hit me here, but it's broke here, so I think it's just smashed the table. What was your reaction when it hit your hand? Did you know straight away it was really bad? Ah, yeah, yeah, it does. I knew straight away. Oh, mate. What are the chances, mate? I was, get, I was nearly getting sick and stuff in the toilet. I was shitting myself. Like, I was, like, just worried about the fight. I was standing there. Everything, mate. Yeah. That's mad. Look at this. That's mad this is heavy. This what it just happened. Well, it could have been... Why it could have been me in the head? If, if that, that would have killed, killed you, if that you in the head, yeah. Not, or a kid child or something. I want to show you it. I feel like I want to show you it because you can take yeah. this fucking thing off. I think we're going to have a look at his look at Carl's hand here. Oh, God. So swollen. Bad oh, it's gone all the in this, all, all the fluids coming all the way through. Fuck, mm. mate, look at how black your inside of your hand is. That's where it hit the floor, so it hit me here first because it was this, it hit me from this yeah. side. It hit me here. And when, you... it, when it when when the cut so when it stopped when I stood up, Nigel went, Oh you're cut here and that's where it's broke. But the pain was fucking here at the mm, start, like mm. that's where it was sore. That was the the first part of point of impact. Mate, you're so lucky that didn't hit your head. I mean you're not lucky at all, but I know you're I know you're right though when you like... think of it like that. Look at that. Jesus. So what um what time was this thing? Because we got It was the... about eleven. 11 a.m. Um, I was just sitting waiting. I, was, I had an interview to do with ESPN in the in the gym that we've been using. We were going to go and open up for them, let them set up, go and have a coffee before training, and this literally just just fucking happened. And you just because you just tweeted your last session. Literally, I tweeted that an hour before it, I think. And I'd, I'd the, the set that was the last hard session. That was a video from the day before, yeah. but I was up that morning, feeling good. Weight, good, everything good. Started my water loading. Yeah, you look so go. lean. I, was, I haven't seen you for like four weeks. I, I had fucking f five donuts and a fucking Philly cheesesteak <laughs> since it happened. Though, eh? Yeah, so, yeah. I'm just, I don't know, devastated. Absolutely devastated. Do you know what? The fight, obviously. I wanted the fight. I wanted the fight. I just feel like a weight. I've been away from my kids and summer holidays, they've been off school, mm -hmm. I've been away. Um, I just feel like an absolute waste, man. An absolute waste. And money down the drain, probably got to 30K in a training camp. Um, been out here in Philly, about three and a bit weeks now. Um, and nothing, nothing to show for it. You spoke to Christine? Yeah. What did she say? She's obviously upset, like, like me. I feel like it's been a wish, it's all right. Oh, you know, again, it could have been the fucking head, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was weird sensation, obviously it was painful, very painful, but it was just like, what the fuck? I was thinking, right, it's Monday, we're five days here, we might start to ease up. If it's not broke, cortisone injection, and it'll, it'll be better, it'll be a lot better in five days, but, uh, because it's broke, if you get a cortisone injection to kill the pain, you could just smash your bone to bits, yeah, you know what I mean? Enough, if you're just yeah. you not feel it, then it's worse. And the fact that, like, 
no disrespect to Emmanuel Dominguez. If I lose to him, my career is over. Yeah. If I'm if I'm a hundred percent, I beat him within four, every four, every four. day. Yeah. Every day of the week. If I have one hand, see if it was my fucking see if I'm in the right hand, I could maybe get away with fighting him with my lead hand mm. and fucking. Jared, how can I, I can't box it for. I couldn't have took the risk to to try and fight him. Couldn't have took the risk. Obviously, you don't you don't lose the the progression of a twelve week camp. The worry is now though. Obviously, this was supposed to be a tune up. Can you now go straight into a world title fight in four or five months' well, that, time without I, any without any sort of tune up? I need. Well, I, I, I think so. I don't want to have another fight like this. I don't want another level of... The, the plan was to have this fight and fight for a world title. Yeah. So the plan is now still to fight for a world title. This fight has not happened. It hasn't happened for whatever reason. Absolutely got it. But I don't want to have another Emmanuel Dominguez type opponent and then fight for a world title. It's a waste of your time, isn't it? It, it is. I, I'm not getting any younger. No. I don't want to be sitting around waiting here. I just want to... I want to I want to I want to be involved in big fights. I want to go straight back into a big a big title. I don't really want to talk to you about this all now because of the circumstances. But I feel we should probably just talk about it because the WBO, yeah, obviously they mandated Stevenson um, for Valdez. Valdez is vacated and is moving up. Yeah. So it's now going to be the Shoei Gonzalez and Stevenson. So that puts those two out of the picture for a while. Yeah. Po- problem I was just thinking about is is Bob was talk- Bob Aaron was talking about you moving up and maybe fighting Michelle or Jamal Herring for the WBO. But mm. if Valdez is moving up, he becomes Herring's mandatory, doesn't he? Because his WBO champ vacates. Okay. What, like, what do you want to do? I want to fight a champion. If, if Tevin Farmer for the IBF? Potentially. Or that's an option. Or you've got... Um, got Michelle with the WBC. Yeah, that's the fucking hardest fight is the, of the super featherweights. Agreed, yeah. But... Okay, I'm happy to fight them. I want to be. I want to go out in a fucking blaze of glory here. Yeah. I want to be a world champion again. And if I get offered a shot against any world champion, featherweight or super featherweight, I'm taking it. Absolutely, no doubt in my mind. Blimey. But Shakur Stevens and, and Gonzalez, I know them two have been ordered. Yeah. I, I don't know if that fight's been made yet. Potentially, me and Shakur could fight. Yeah. Two top-ranked guys, highly ranked with WBO. Potentially that's an option for a vacant title. Yeah. Another one that I'm willing to take, but Jamel Herring potentially at, at WBO as well. Mm. Bob Arum has said that if I move up, it's my fastest route to a world title, but... That's the worry though, if Valdez has moved up, like I said to you, because if you're the yeah. WBO champ, you vacate, yeah. you become mandatory for the weight above, so that might blockade your your ambitions yeah. there. Yeah. But again, I guess it depends on what how, how the land lies in a few months. You don't really want to think about it now, you need to no, go and rest. I, I, I want to go home and see, see Christine and the kids. More got, than anything, I've got a holiday booked. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Just it's just it's shit. Yeah. It's it's shit. I it, know. It, it, like people expect you to say this about your training camps being good and perfect. This is the most disciplined I've ever been in sparring, in listening to the instructions and, and bag work and everything. I've just been disciplined. There was one part of a of a twelve week camp at a spar with Akib Fiaz, one of my sparring partners. And the plan in this fight was always to move and be reactive and get up on my toes and do what I can do best. There was about 30 seconds in the whole camp where I stood and had a fight with a kid. And Jamie stopped the spar and said, well, stop, Carl, get back to your boxing. And I got back to my boxing. And that was a 30 seconds in the whole camp where I got lazy and macho. And that's when you do something. Like yeah. it's, a, it's, an easy, it's easier to stand up a fight than it is actually to use your brain and, and think. Tommy Coyle says the best when it, he says it hurts his head yeah, trying yeah. to think his way around a boxing a boxing match he'd rather just have a fight. And that was the only the only the only time that I was ill disciplined in a whole twelve week camp. And then I go and get my fucking hand smashed on a stupid bit of whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. It should be nailed to the floor and it isn't. I couldn't make it up. What have the hotel know. said to you? No, I haven't said a lot. They've failed the report, but um, I don't know. I need to speak to I need to speak to people. I want to speak to people about this. I've lost a big payday. Yeah. I've lost potentially a world title shot. <laughs> I've lost time with my kids. Lost a lot out of out of 
a, a fucking a thing that happened. No one's fault apart from whoever the fuck thought that that was a good idea to set that thing there and then screw it to the floor. Yeah. So first flight home tomorrow, is it? Yeah, there's a 5.30 flight tomorrow, so I'll be on that, yeah. What do you need to do in regards to, obviously you've had the X-rays, you know that the fifth metacarpal Fifth metacarpal. Broken. Um, you need to get it reassessed and reevaluated by someone at home. When I get back home, I don't, the doctor says no, it's just, it's a, it was a, he called it a, it wasn't a clean break, but a, what did he say? Uh, whatever, whatever the terminology used was, it just meant it was clean. So It'll heal on its own. So. Yeah, so he says four to six weeks, it should be, it should be fine, but um, I haven't got four or six weeks, have I? Fights on Saturday night. Yeah. So yeah. sorry, mate. Yeah. Uh, shit. Hmm. All right. Well, look, mate. It happens, mate. It happens, you know what I mean? Well, what it do doesn't. Do it doesn't really, though, does well, it? It doesn't. And the thing is, no, you're right. It doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't happen. fucking happen. Uh, and we got kind of, you can't. How do you, you know what I mean? How the fuck? Do you remember in New York that? Not to bring it up now, do you remember that statue nearly fucking fell on you at Diamante's bar and Matt grabbed it and he put his shoulder out? So you did. That was an R1, a statue nearly so, fell on Seriously, a big, a big thing nearly fell on Carl and Matt grabbed it and put his shoulder out. That was like six weeks ago. Fuck, where are you earlier? Oh, Matt, how weird. Where are you earlier? No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Christine said it recently. If I fell out a window, I'd fall on the mattress. Like, if things work out for me. When it, so. I don't know. At the minute, I feel like if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Yeah. What is what you know? What is that? Just so much time away from the kids. Uh, an absolute waste. Just feels like a waste. Yeah. And people traveling, you know. You know, a lot of people coming over to watch and support. I felt like I was I was obliged. I had to phone them, and I phoned as many around as many people as I could that I knew that were coming over just to, before a statement went out, just to explain the situation. Um, and apologise to them. I was out of my hands, but I still feel like I needed to apologise to them. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything else you want to say, because this is going to go out in the morning, so if, any, if yeah, anyone just, else you know... I, I'm got it. I'm, I know people... It's not, it's not cheap to come to America to support me. I'm genuinely sorry. I hope if people are still going to make a trip that they enjoy themselves, but... Yeah. It is what it is. I, I couldn't do nothing about it, yeah. honestly. And, I, and you know, if, it, if this had been my right hand, I still probably fought, you know? Mm. I still probably try to fight. Mm. Well, mate, thanks for talking to us, because I know it's not a very easy time to, to do it, but I do appreciate it. And um, just, yeah, safe flight back and just get rested up and we'll see you see you when you're back on your holidays, I suppose. No worries, mate. Hopefully on a slightly happier note. How are you getting on with hosting this show on your own It's these not days. been the same without you, mate. It's been, it's been all right, but yeah, we're missing you, so. Any good? Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> Numbers have been flying. <laughs> good man. All right, pal. Cheers, mate. Take care, I'll see you back Thank in you. the UK. You've been watching TKO on Joe, together with 32 Red.